Um, well, thank you very much. It's great to be up here in uh, Leicestershire. I'm really pleased uh, to be able to come and visit uh, firsthand uh, what you've been doing here. Uh, it's quite an important milestone for the project, as has already been described. I know it's been, I think, more than five years uh, in the making. Uh, my good friend Alberto Costa, uh, MP, and of course, Blaby uh, Council were absolutely instrumental in getting uh, it off the ground and I know continue to be very strong supporters. I want to particularly thank uh, the leader, uh, Terry Richardson, um, uh, for all... Is, Terry's here, yeah, good, good to see you again, Terry. Yeah, um, uh, for all that they've been doing and, and really thank everyone involved for keeping the project on track. I know how difficult some of these construction projects can be. And of course, on top of everything else, you've had the huge challenges of COVID. So I think the team have done an amazing job um, and uh, I wanted to come here in person to thank you for that. Uh, of course, from the government's point of view, from my point of view as uh, Justice Secretary, the development here is part of a uh, really ambitious building programme, uh, the most ambitious in more than a century in terms of prison places. We've earmarked close to £4 billion to build six state-of-the-art prisons um, and expand other sites uh, across the country. Uh, and, and the reason we're doing this and building more prison places is fundamentally because we want to protect uh, the country and the public from serious offenders, and in particular, dangerous offenders. Um, we've uh, invested uh, an enormous amount of money, and that's going to create up to 18,000 additional prison places, and on top of that, an extra 2,000 temporary ones. Um, and uh, we need those places partly because uh, of the pressures there are in the existing system, but also because of the new sentencing laws that we're passing. Uh, we've got a bill going through the House of Commons, I think it's actually going through the House of Lords at the moment, which is going to end the ha automatic halfway point release of dangerous, violent and sexual offenders. Uh, we've obviously got to find the places to make sure that we can uh, deal with that. We also uh, need, as we come back from COVID, we've uh, halfway through the 20,000 extra police that we're recruiting, uh, we get the courts backfiring on all cylinders and reduce the backlog. We're going to need the places to deal with the, uh, the outcome and the output of all of that extra uh, criminal justice work. And of course, 1,700 of those places will be right here at Glen Parva. So I think that's exciting and the work that's being done here is really blazing a trail for all of the other builds that we're doing. We want better design right across uh, all of our prisons across the country. Um, and, and it's, I suppose, timely and topical with COP26 um, this week, and you'll have seen the coverage around that, that actually um, we're, we're hosting the UN Climate Change uh, Conference, but we're also leading by example. And that's not just what the government does, it's what industry do, and that includes in uh, building prisons and indeed all the other construction work we do across the country. Um, and I know that you've been really working very hard here on methods uh, to construct the site which will have far less impact on the environment than previous prison build projects. Uh, many of the materials being used uh, to bring this project to life come from sustainable recycled uh, sources um, and, and that's incredibly important. It's not just about making the site more eco-friendly and doing our bit, contributing to climate change, uh, tackling climate change, but it's also better value for taxpayers' money. Um, so there's a, a double uh, a value to it. It makes economic sense as well as making environmental sense. The design here builds on efficiencies that we've made at other prisons like HMP Berwyn. Um, and uh, we know in North Wales that had a 23% reduction in carbon emissions compared to the more uh, the older parts of the prison estate. So that's a significant achievement. And what we want to do is, as well as we go, and it's an iterative process, is take the lessons that you're all learning here and make sure that the next four prisons we build, uh, starting at Full Sutton near York, um, we emit 90% less CO2. And eventually some of those sites can be a net zero in terms of carbon emissions. So we're taking those positive steps along the way to net zero. And what we're doing in the construction sector, and in particular in prisons, is an important part of that. So uh, this prison and prisons more generally are going to have less impact on the environment. But even more importantly, they're going to have a huge impact on cutting crime. Uh, and one of the reasons is not just because they will have the incapacitative effect of taking offenders off the streets, that's important, 
but also we've got the opportunity to do very exciting new things with offenders once they're in the prison state. And that is really one of the central missions that I've got as Justice Secretary. Um, we want to have prisons with a purpose, and that means providing uh, a constructive purpose to everything that offenders do when they're on the inside. Let me just give uh, you a sense of, uh, of what that, that means in practice, but I think for the public, they don't want to think of offenders inside uh, prisons uh, constructed as holding cells while offenders while away their days uh, waiting to be released and in effect drifting back into a life of crime. Uh, that would be a waste of their time and taxpayers' money and I don't think that that's what our communities and our neighbourhoods um, expect. So we want to see prisoners spending their sentences working to get their, their lives back on track and we of course, we see from a moral point of view how important that is for them and from a social point of view how important that is for our neighbourhoods and our communities. Uh, getting clean from alcohol uh, and from drugs and any dependency they may have is critically important. Uh, we want to see them getting into purposeful activity uh, so that when they're released, and the vast majority of offenders, uh, including those that go into prison, um, uh, even for long sentences, they will eventually be released. So we've got to use the time uh, when you've got them effectively as a captive audience to help them to turn their lives around. Um, and that's exactly what the site here at Glen Parva is designed to do, which is one of the reasons why I found it quite exciting, why I wanted to come and see what it looked like so we can spread the word and spread the best practice. Um, we've engaged in that process with offenders, with prison officers, with charities. We're using empirical data uh, empirical research so that we've got a really state-of-the-art uh, prison facility um, because we know that that will create the environment to support offenders uh, every step of the way. There's a number of different facets to it if you like. The first one is education. Uh, this new prison will be the most technologi technologically advanced across the prison estate and in particular with the access offenders will have to in-cell digital uh, technology. So they can take full advantages of education and training opportunities. They're not just sat on a bunk, <coughs> excuse me. They can work on basic skills, whether it's maths and English. We know there's a huge problem with numeracy and literacy of offenders when they come inside the prison estate. Uh, for those that have got their numeracy and literacy up to scratch, we can help divert them into vocational training and courses, everything from IT uh, and engineering, through to very practical things, which are really important for an offender when they uh, are released. Uh, we take for granted access to public transport, the ability to drive a car, but actually if an offender in their cell can do the theory bit of their driving license test, that's a real step forward for them in planning for release. So those are the kinds of things that we want to see Glen Parva and other prisons set up to do. Um, prisoners will also be able to hold uh, these qualifications that they then acquire in what we're calling digital backpacks, but so that they take them with them, they don't just get lost in a paper file somewhere. Um, and, and we've seen that work quite effectively at HMP Five Wells. So um, again, they can study on the inside, but then put the training and the qualifications they get to good use when they get outside the prison estate. So education is really important, and I think what you're doing here is really exciting. The use of technology uh, in the cell uh, and, and more generally is, uh, is going to be really powerful force for good. The second, I think, impressive feature here when I've looked at the design and, and what we're trying to achieve is the scope for uh, training workshops at scale. Um, so the prison will ensure offenders have got the opportunity to gain and hone vocational skills. Um, things like carpentry, plumbing, bricklaying, which we've seen very effective at other prisons. And taken together, this kind of education and training is absolutely crucial uh, because it makes offenders more employable. And if they have a job within 12 months of release, uh, they're up to nine percentage points less likely to reoffend. So it's good for them, uh, it's good for their self worth. Uh, I was down at HMP High Down and HMP Ford and I talked to some fairly serious offenders who were in work in the, uh, one was a marketing call centre, the other one was uh, driving HGV lorries, something we've got a shortage of at the moment. Um, but it was very interesting hearing from uh, one individual who'd done 11 years, or was tail end of 11 year sentence for drug trafficking. Um, and he was saying to me not just how this would give him the opportunity to get on the straight and narrow when he was released, but he was also saying he bought with the wages from being able to work 
uh, shoes for his kids for the first time ever, and a sense of self-worth and the contribution to his family. This is all part of, if you like, the glimmer of hope after a very bleak period for that individual, which I think is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, and of course, there's a benefit to the economy. We know there's skills shortages in various different sectors, probably in the construction sector uh, as well. Uh, we've got a million job vacancies at the moment in the economy. So making sure offenders can get jobs uh, means that we can help them turn their lives around, but also actually they can contribute to the economy and to support businesses with labour shortages as well. Um, and with that in mind, one of the first things I did when I came in as Justice Secretary was host an employer's summit uh, looking at how we can expand the good practice we've got in some prisons, and I mentioned HMP Ford, HMP Highdown, uh, which are doing some of that really um, uh, innovative work, but to get more businesses coming into prisons uh, so that we create that opportunity. And I think it's good for the local community uh, as well. Um, so I want to learn from some of those lessons, uh, like the call centre in Highdown, run by Census Life, um, because those prisoners aren't just gaining new skills, they're experiencing what it's like to have the responsibility uh, of turning up every day uh, in a work setting, uh, and they're earning a wage. Uh, and some of them are doing that for the very first time. Um, so as soon as the gates are bolted on here at Glen Parva, uh, one of the things, and, and in fact before, one of the things that we're going to be doing is encouraging local businesses to come in and engage with the prison governor and the team uh, here to build similar links with local businesses. And I think, and I'm thinking of the council and uh, um, Alberto, uh, I think it's a great opportunity to work with the prison and with local businesses um, to see where the skills gaps are locally in the economy and you've got an opportunity here to fill them. You've got a captive audience, they're not going anywhere, um, the opportunities for them are enormous and one of the really interesting things that I got from the Employers Summit was not that you'd think that employers were nervous about hiring offenders what consistently the feedback to me was that they're incredibly well motivated. They're not just employable, they're very promotable. Um, they have less sick days than the average uh, employee that they hire. I mean, some really interesting counterintuitive stuff. So again, I'm looking forward to seeing how you can harness some of that learning and how we can encourage businesses to get involved. Uh, and I think there's a real win-win there. So that's the second thing. So we've got skills and we've got work in prisons. The third thing I think is really important if you look at the life cycle of offender while they're in prison and then when they go on to probation, um, uh, this prison is going to be able to help them address things like mental health challenges, uh, addictions that could be holding them back from getting their lives back on track. And we started trialling some interesting new technology in prisons that means offenders can get help from medical professionals. And in particular, of course, we've come through the pandemic. We're all starting to use virtual communication, Zoom, Teams uh, much more readily. Um, and that kind of thing, particularly with the in-cell technology, there's at least the potential to really revolutionise the way that offenders take control uh, of some of the problems they've got uh, and get back on track. And then finally, the fourth bit is that I think um, this prison uh, and the innovation that we're seeing here can uh, make sure that offenders have the support in place to make a success uh, of their release. One of the things that we're talking about is prison passports. Uh, and just to be clear, it's passport out of prison and all the things that they need to notch up, the stamps, if you like, in their passport to make that work. And it includes things like maintaining links with their families, um, making sure they've got a stable accommodation to go to. Uh, we know that these things, I mean, in fairness, with families, the links that prisoners have, is, nine times out of ten, it's a stabilising influence. Sometimes it isn't. But actually where it is, making sure that they can land uh, on the outside of a prison in a more stable environment, which means having a roof over their head and having people around them that are a positive influence is incredibly important. Um, and again, we come back to the in-cell technology, uh, the uh, ability to keep in touch with a small number uh, of people who can exercise that constructive and positive influence them and give them hope to keep on doing the skills, turning up for work, uh, because they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think it's important. Obviously, all these things in-house, in-cell technology, we'll need to be very carefully vetted. We're very mindful of all the risks of offenders going online, of course we are. But I think if you do that carefully, you vet it carefully, and there's some pretty exciting opportunities ahead. Um, so I think one of the, again, the exciting things is not just the individual strands of this reform agenda, but the fact that this kind of prison 
and what you've built here will bring all of those different elements together because it's the compound effect of getting the accommodation, the drug rehabilitation, the skills, the work opportunities, the contact with family, right? Do all of those things together. You're much less likely to see an offender re-offend on release and that cuts crime and that's good for your local neighbourhood and your local communities. Um, so that's basically um, the vision. And, and, and again, I, I, I think the, um, we also want to show, because I, I recognise that if you build a whopping great prison uh, in a community, there may be one or two objections. I, planning is a big issue in my constituency. But I think it's important to show uh, that when you do a project like this, um, there can be really tangible benefits for the local community. So um, just to give you a sense, of what we've done here, 47 local ex-offenders and prisoners on day release have been involved in building the project. That's again a good example of how they can get skills and work experience. Um, the project is bringing a range of other local benefits to bear. £68 million has been invested in the local economy as part of that build. It's obviously a huge boon uh, to local communities. Almost a third of that money 18 million pounds has gone to local small and medium-sized businesses um, and I think the SME sector is incredibly important so if we can make sure that they get a, uh, a boost from these kind of projects uh, that's really important too. When it's operational the prison will be uh, there will be 600 jobs available for local people at the prison now of course some of that's going to be prison officers but there are also other things like healthcare roles education training uh, maintenance, administration. So I, I, I hope um, Alberto and the local council will feel that there's a win in this for them as well. And again, if I look across the prison estate, I think we want to be uh, box a little smarter than we have in the past and make sure that you've got that local community buy-in. So um, that's all really I wanted to say. Um, in closing, can I just again thank everyone who's been involved in the project. Um, we're looking forward to working with the local authority, with Alberto, with Lendlease, uh, with all the suppliers, um, and indeed the wider local community to get this prison operational by spring 2023. Uh, and we're launching the appeal today for the new name uh, for the prison. Uh, and again, it's part of getting the local community buy-in and making sure uh, local folk feel that they've got a stake in what we're trying to achieve here. I, I think just again, finally, to, to conclude, this new prison build uh, will have a whole range of benefits for the local community, for offenders, um, but it's also a very important part of our mission as a government, not just in the criminal justice sector, but more broadly. Uh, and I think for the country as a whole, as we come through this pandemic, as we build back better, we've got an opportunity to beat crime, turn offenders' lives around, and also make the streets safer and strengthen the fabric of our local communities. That's the vision and thank you so much for helping us make it a reality. Thank you very much.